In this video, I'm going to replace the factory suspension on my Engway M20 e-bike with this upgraded fully adjustable air suspension, both the front fork and the rear shock. You'll also need this shock pump to be able to adjust the fork to the desired pressure that you want. A link to all these products is above and they're also in the description. So let's get started on this install. I flipped the bike over so that I could work on the bike easier when installing the new suspension. In order to remove the rear shock, you're going to need two 5mm hex. I'm going to use one to hold one side, and then the other I'm just going to loosen. Now, in order to remove the sleeve, what you're going to do is just Take a little force, pull up the rear wheel, and then you'll see that this sleeve will come out fairly easily. Same thing over here. You can see it pop out. And what you want to do is just be careful moving this. There. Now you can see the back of the portion of the bike comes down. You can rest it there. Now this is the old shock. It's 750 pounds. It's oil filled it has no adjustability so for heavy riders it probably works well but this new air filled shock is fully adjustable on two different chambers and you can really dial this in for your riding weight and height it should also provide a better ride and give some dampening as this seat isn't the most comfortable seat for e-bikes i'm going to make sure that this portion is on this side so that I'm not having to fill the air and it's impeding on the wires. Now to install the new shock, I'm gonna start with the back here and I'm gonna do the similar installation as the removal. All right, I'm gonna start and put the sleeves in from the far side like this and then I'm going to install the screw just going to get this lined up tighten it by hand for right now what i'm going to do is lift this up now get this aligned it slides into that clevis then you're going to slide that sleeve in there it might help sliding it around you might have to jiggle the wheel to get that to align just take note not to pinch these cables, so push it down, then push that in, and install the screw on the other side. Okay, just going to tighten this down. Hold this side. Tighten that down, and then do the same back here. I got that tight. I'll come back and adjust the air pressure once I flip the bike over, but that's done. I'm gonna move up to the front now. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do to install the new front fork is disconnect the headlight. There's two connections, one for each headlight. That way when I remove it, it's free. You're gonna need a Phillips head and a 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna use the drill on this slide that in there and you're going to remove it from each side now that I have it loosened up remove the brackets once you get those little brackets off then this simply gets removed to remove the front wheel, you're going to need a 12 millimeter socket on the bolt side, a 14 millimeter on the nut side, and then start loosening this up. Take the little tabbed washers out of the fork, and we're going to set the wheel aside. I'm going to remove the brake from the factory shock. Now remember these are upgraded hydraulic brakes because the mechanical ones were not great. So I want to be careful with this hydraulic brake. 
All right, I detached the brake from the fork. I'm just gonna set this over here. I'm not gonna remove the fender because I bought some plastic aftermarket fenders. I'll have a separate video on how to install those, but I'm gonna rather put on the plastic fenders. These metal ones, uh, they're susceptible to scratch, dent, ding, and when you're riding on gravel surfaces, it makes a lot of noise. So the plastic ones should be much improvement over these metal ones. I'm going to try a different method of installing this fork. Instead of removing the stem from the frame and doing all that, what I'm going to do is just loosen up the crowns and then I'm going to slide the entire uh, fork out of the frame and then I'm going to do the same thing with this new one and reuse the crown and stem for that and get it positioned appropriately. So let's give it a try. The one thing you have to remember is to install those rubber bumpers when I go to slide the new fork in. I'm going to use a six millimeter hex to loosen the crown that holds on each side of the suspension. And now this fork should slide right out. You have these plastic bumpers which protect it from hitting the frame. Slide those down like that to the end. And you want to reinstall those. And then slide that out. There you go. This is the old fork. And then I'm going to do the new fork. I'm going to disassemble it from its crowns and then install the new air fork. So here is the new air fork. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up these bolts here on each side of the crown, just like I did with the stock fork. Loosen them up and I'm gonna slide this off the, remove the plastic bumpers. Set those aside and then I'm gonna remove the lower crown here so that I don't scratch the new fork I'm just going to rub a little bit of dish soap on each one of these crowns to help with the friction I also putting dish soap on here nice thing with dish soap it easily comes off it's not greasy like Vaseline make sure this is facing towards the front and then what I'm going to do is slide the new fork in the old crown and then make sure that you have these rubber stoppers ready to go I'm just going to put them on here and then should just slide right into place I ran into a small issue with this fork and I highly recommend this one. With this fork here, the Bolani will slide right down into the crown because it's the same size barrels. It's 32 millimeters, this is 34 millimeters, so it won't fit in there. And then you don't have to remove the two crowns. You can just simply slide the new fork onto the old crowns and then your assembly is much, much easier. Reattach the brake, the wheel, and the fender, and then you can keep motoring. Once you slide the shocks up into the crowns, you wanna secure these bolts with six millimeter hexes. You wanna secure them really securely as this shock sometimes will slide up and then you'll see that the shock tends to move up out of the crown and you want to make sure that's secure once that's secure then angle your bumpers correctly so that the shock doesn't crash into the frame re-secure the headlight and then go and adjust the shock pressure i flipped the bike over and now i'm going to adjust the air pressure on the rear shock i'm removing the two caps on the top and bottom and then i'm going to attach the shock pump So I attached the shock pump to the bottom and I noticed that the PSI was set to 100 from the factory. I adjusted it down to about 90 PSI because I want a little more dampening or cushiony ride.
And now I'm going to remove the shock pump and move it up to the top. And the top has an air pressure of 150 PSI. I adjusted that down to about 120. And now the shock is better absorbing compared to the factory settings. To adjust the air pressure in the front fork, you're going to simply remove the cap on the left-hand side and then thread the shock pump onto that fitting. The factory air pressure was 200 PSI. I dropped it to about 160 PSI so that it's better dampening for my riding conditions. And then I'm removing the shock pump and then reinstall the cap. I hope that you liked this video. Subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.